today. I have my onboarding appointment for my job, so I'm super excited about um, just getting the ball rolling on some of this stuff. I have done this before because, like I said, I worked at this company for this hospital that I am going to be a new grad at already. Um, so at this appointment, as far as I know, we're going over like immunization type things, getting my blood drawn, I believe, for like a TB test, getting my photo taken, and I did actually like my picture that I had before on my tech badge. So, you know like when you get a good badge picture, you're like, it's, it's a memorable event. So. You want to keep it as long as you can because notably the ones that you have for a long time are the ones that you don't like right I'm doing the fit test for the n95 or papper i hate doing that test so much because it's failed me before so i'm going to take you guys along with what i can show anyway which is probably not a lot but i will give you the rundown we're done about when I say onboarding and orientation and what that means in terms of accepting a nursing position. So before um, all of this stuff today, here's kind of the process of how accepting my offer went. The manager of the unit that I interviewed with and that I was selected to participate in, be hired for, communicates with the HR representative who communicates with me that they're wanting to extend an offer to me. So before this, I signed an offer letter a few weeks ago. And what that offer letter entails is my status, in full-time, part-time, PRN, and what I will be making for my rate, and then also whether I'll be on day or night shift. I am going to be full-time. As a new grad, it's hard to find positions, I think, that offer part-time or PRN. So most of them are full time. This is just because there's so much to learn as a new grad and you really need that time. If you're only working two shifts a week or one shift a week or every other week, how could you possibly learn everything that there is to know? So that's why they do full time most of the time. So I am full time, which is 36 hours a week, um, except for during orientation purposes, they can use me up to 40 hours. As far as my rate, I'm not going to say what that's going to be right now, but I will say that as new grads, it's the same as your co whole cohort. So for every new grad that's accepted to every unit, so like the ER, the PICU, the just general ambulatory floors, those, everyone makes the same as far as I'm aware of. However, if you have new grad time under your belt, you definitely can negotiate that pay rate I just don't believe they do very much negotiation when it comes to new grad pay. On top of that, you will also get shift differential. So we're talking for night shift, evening hours, weekends, that kind of stuff. They should be able to provide you during your offer letter time with that information. And then as far as your shift, that's something you should discuss during your interview process. Absolutely. I don't know how much that conversation really happens during um, new grad interviews just because I think as a new grad you're kind of like where can you put me unless maybe you have children or something that's really pressing for you to be on day shift or night shift or whatever it may be. For me I was so happy to be on my unit that I'm like I'm fine with night shift honestly did nights during school. If I can make that work, just having a job and doing night shift should be a lot easier. So I'm okay with that. Um, not to mention the pay is better. I'm guessing I will be on day shift most of my orientation, which is about five months. And then I will probably switch to nights, which is just fine with me. After accepting that offer letter, you will typically get 
um, as far as my hospital goes, I'm sure other hospitals operate the same way. I got an email with my pre-boarding is what they call it. So this is information on how to do my drug test, background check, and occupational health appointment. So I did my background check information, just entering it into the portal with, um, I think, seven years of addresses I've lived at, names I've used, places I've worked at, um, and they cross-reference that with my resume, and then if they have questions, they go from there. Then the next thing, I did my drug, drug test, which is just going in. It's definitely different than doing like a pregnancy test at your doctor's office. This is definitely more like strict in where you can't bring any items into the bathroom with you. You can't flush the toilet until they tell you you can. You can't wash your hands until they say you can. Um, just to make sure there's no contamination. I'm sure there's instances of people bringing in specimens and using them as their own when it's not theirs. And it's just to keep us safe and make sure that the people they're hiring are upstanding people that are not involved in illegal activities as you can imagine we're in roles of giving medications to people children that are highly sensitive and very dangerous medications you don't want somebody that's partaking in that kind of stuff to be caring for your child absolutely not so but it is a little bit weird at first so just to just to give a warning, um, it's unusual, but they're just doing it for everybody's safety and to keep best practice. Occupational health screen, which is what I did today. So that all involved, I went to the, I would say like operations center for my hospital, but you go in, I got my picture taken for my badge, which is super exciting. Um, I hope it turns out okay. I didn't even get to see it, but I also didn't want to be that girl that was asking for her old picture. So I got new hair, new photo, it's fine. I'm sure it'll be great. And then I moved on to doing my mask fitting, which for those of you that have never worked in healthcare, and this might be new to you, but for those of us that have worked through COVID, we know this, like the back of our hand, um, fit testing. So when a patient has COVID or on airborne precautions, you, it requires a special mask and PPE. The mask is one of the most important parts of the PPE. To do this testing, it's all very computerized. So they take you into this room and have you put on a mask. They just There's two sizes, small, regular, and then there's a couple other options if those don't work. The small and the regular masks, because they're duckbill masks, they're cheaper and like more readily available so that's why they start with those in the past i have been a regular size and a small size so we started with the regular and she just had me put it on my face like i said it looks like a duck bill kind of coming out and it'll be very very tight around your face um and you'll have to push down on the nose um, around here you'll have to pull your hair out to make sure that nothing's sticking for guys, I think you can't have facial hair or there's other options that they give you, I believe. Um, what they're checking for is to make sure that that seal is really, really tight. That way, particles from somebody that has airborne illnesses, COVID, those particles aren't able to get to you where you're getting infected. Pretty basic. But if your face is sometimes a weird shape or you've had dental surgery or jaw surgery, nose surgery, it can really like cause you have to do something else so um that's why they do that everyone is very specific so um mine ended up working on the regular we did the seal and then I, you do tests after that the instructor will usually have you like bend forward at the waist several times um and then you read a passage and turn your head uh, right to left several times up and down um, and they're just, again, checking to make sure that seal is good um, when you're doing things because you're not just going into a room for two seconds and then moving on. So you're usually doing something. So they want to make sure that it's okie dokie for you. And then if that doesn't work, they'll sometimes do like a papper, which is this big like hood hazmat suit sort of thing. We saw that a lot during COVID. It's connected to a battery pack and a hose that feeds air in. Um, it's 
really a lot easier to breathe than the mask to me um, just because airflow is a little bit better but then the like shield is right in front of your face it can be very claustrophobic for sure especially you have to wear it for a long period of time but pros and cons to everything so I ended up with the regular mask and then they give you this little like badge buddy to put on um, that says like my name date I was tested and then I'm a regular mask so that way when I have a patient that has COVID or another airborne precautions, I will just grab one of those masks and put it on. And then the other thing that I did was go see a nurse and they go over all my medical records, um, any medical conditions I have and how that could affect my job, um, making sure that all my immunizations are uploaded, which you will have to do if you um, haven't worked for them before. So you'll have to bring all that information with you. Varicella, MMR, Tdap, Hep B, flu shot if it's within season, COVID if they require it, that kind of stuff. Um, so they go over that. And then TB testing. I think a lot of hospitals are switching to just the blood draw for doing the TB testing and not the intradermal tests where you come back several days later. Not doing that as much anymore, I've noticed. They're doing the quantiferon. So they took my blood. Um, and that was pretty much it and I was out the door like I said in like 15 minutes it was so fast um, so I got all that done and now I'm just waiting for orientation to find out um, how that's gonna go because that's a few weeks away which is insane <laughs>